Deputy Clare Daly, please. Thanks, Count Corla. And unlike Deputy Connolly, I have no respect for the Irish Times, but uh, I would say that uh, the person whose article, if you like, brought this information into the public domain is one of the better ones. And it is the case that uh, survivors of the mother and baby homes, not to mind politicians, should not be getting their information from the Irish Times or any other uh, media outlet Ireland, uh, either. Now, I think this is an incredibly uh, important issue. There's a certain irony in the fact that we are celebrating 100 years of this parliament, 100 years of the Irish state, and yet one of our biggest, dirtiest little secrets still hasn't been properly examined uh, over the past period. It is part of what we are. The way in which women and their children were treated in this state, and as Deputy Collins said, particularly working class and poorer women were treated, hidden behind walls, their babies taken from them in many instances, and them and their children living with that trauma to this day. We can't develop as a state unless we fully acknowledge that, unless we fully utilise the information that's available to us as a state, learn, apologise, give redress. And for the record, redress is not about money. In many instances, redress is an acknowledgement of the wrong. And when we've raised these issues before and the T-shirt gets up and says, yeah, of course, I'm sorry, that's not the same thing. It's not a full, wholesome acknowledgement of a wrong of we as a society have to take responsibility for. And it's in that context that we have to examine this now, the fourth interim report of the Mother and Baby Home Condition, uh, Commission. And in some ways, it strikes me as incredibly similar to the children's hospital, because the argument is kind of the same. We know this has ended up different than the way in which we started it out. It wasn't the way we planned it, but you look at now, it's gone so far down the road that it'd be an awful ways to pull back from that now. We're kind of stuck with it, so the only thing we can do is go with the flow, because it'd be madness to waste all the work that is being done. What I'd say to that is that that was what was put forward last year. And the deputies across this House, in good faith, accepted the bona fides of that argument. They didn't like it. The survivors certainly didn't like it. They were seriously traumatised by that situation. But they accepted it because it's a rational argument to make. We've gone so far, it's complicated. We can't do that this time round. There is a difference a year on because we had that conversation. So now our job is to say, well, hang on a minute. Really, is it good enough to say, you've got that far, we let you finish it off? We have to now say, well, why didn't you do it in the time in which it was allotted? Was it that we, in laying down the terms of reference of that, got it wrong? Because something's wrong. How in God's name can you have a commission set up with a budget of 21 million that goes over two years, so is therefore renting nice offices in Bagot Street for two years longer than it was supposed to, is employing people for two years longer than it's supposed to, and yet the budget is unchanged? How could that be? Like the sums don't add up. So did we get the budget wrong, or is there something wrong now? I haven't got an answer to that. I don't know what that is, but that's... To me, because we don't know how it's got this far, I, there's only two conclusions you can draw. Either this has been done in a monumentally disastrous, ham-fisted way, or there's something more cynical afoot. They're the only two conclusions that come out of it. It's been handled so badly, uh, and uh, other deputies have made points around it. But let's look at where we are. So the interim report said it needed more time this time around. They said there was 26 people remaining that they had to interview, that they'd be done by January. As other deputies have said, have those 26 people been interviewed? The second issue that was raised by them was that they'd got a big bulk load of documents. Uh, they'd only come into the foray, but that they weren't sure the extent of the material in these files, but it was likely to run to many thousands of pages, and the Commission expected to receive the files in December 2018. Did the Commission receive the files in December 2018, as indicated in the interim report, and did it run to thousands of pages? Uh, and based on that information, 
What are they saying now about their likely conclusion date? Because if you read the different interim reports, the language in part of it is absolutely identical between earlier reports and this one. We can't have that. Like the phrase, I think, the report talks about considerable workload to cross-reference documents and that it talks about delays in obtaining the evidence from the authorities which ran the institutions that couldn't be examined until the Commission had finished the examination of the documents. Exactly word for word in one interim report to the other. So what happened in between? And why is it that a Commission set up by the Department of Children was waiting on documents that didn't come in until a year after that commission was supposed to have concluded from the same department. Now, either they're the most incompetent shower on the history of the universe, or there's something more sinister afoot, that there are forces obstructing the transfer of this information. I haven't got an answer to that. I actually don't know and nobody has given me a, a rational explanation, but I have read between the lines of some of the stuff in the report where they talk about the HSC, which is utterly frightening. And again, it is indictment of our very weak media in this state that they fail to scrutinise the real issues that go on in here and instead prefer to chase a cheap headline, that they don't actually do real scrutiny. Because if they'd highlighted and examined what is actually in this report, limited at all as it is, and they're shocked that the HSC doesn't have any system, let alone a proper system of archiving uh, materials, they find it difficult to understand how relatively recent documentation is not available. Now, for a public commission to say that, what do they mean? Really what they mean, if it's difficult to understand, really what they're saying is they don't believe it. They can't understand it. There's no logical explanation as to how that would be. So why is that the case? I haven't heard anything in uh, that regard. And I think these are incredibly uh, serious issues. I know the minister has talked a lot about um, tomb and the graves. And that is, in some ways, a separate issue to the Mother and Baby Home Commission. It's tied in, but it's not necessarily what we're talking about here. And I want to strongly um, support the point made by deputies who ask for the issues of apology and redress to be, if you like, taken out of this process. It's scandalous that we haven't had an answer to the issue of the Bethany Homes. Now, to the best of my knowledge, and I haven't seen anything, and maybe I'll hear it now, I haven't seen a single word as to why the Bethany Homes redress issue cannot be addressed now. This commission that we set up has said they should never have been excluded in the first place. They're an ageing cohort of people, and yet we're waiting for another year before we even look at that. that can't be. We have the fund is still there, the uh, parameter of it is still there, the existing uh, basis of the scheme can be utilised in a creative way to allow those individuals to get redress. Everybody agrees they should. What's the point in us all saying we all agree and then they're dying off in the meantime so it doesn't get any sort of legal effect. We have to do something and I really would like the Minister to answer that because it hasn't been answered anywhere. The Bethany Homes people can be dealt with now. There is a mechanism there for it. The Commission has recommended it in its earlier thing. What are we waiting for? And again, that brings me to the other groups and that as well. The issue of the apology and looking at that area, we really need uh, to, to give this far more uh, careful attention because I suppose the problem I have with it is too often in here, we set up these commissions, they're sent off to do their work, and that's a great excuse then for everybody to forget about them. And that's generally, it's had, I made the point here before, it hasn't just happened on this, the Grace Commission, it was the hottest news in town when it was on prime time and everybody wanted to know, poor Grace, the Commission is set up, it's well past its deadline and who even cares to ask in here about it or indeed who in the media is really keeping an eye on that, not to mind all the other commissions that we set up at a monstrous amount of money and they never ever do what they're supposed to do. And I know people have said to me, oh, well, you're the one one of the biggest people in here arguing for stuff to go into commissions, but that's the only vehicle that's there. And maybe we as an Oroctus need to say that actually, do you know what, they're not really working because they're not doing the job on the tin. So either they weren't equipped and all of the excuses that you've given now on their behalf 
We bought them last year. It's not good enough this year. They need to explain why they said last year they would deliver in a year and why should we believe them now that they're going to deliver next year. Otherwise, we're just selling everybody short, particularly uh, the survivors.